Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So today we're doing all of IGCSC 3D trigonometry. So we're going to focus on those 3D questions that are usually some of the more difficult on the IGCSC course. And if you haven't seen my trigonometry video that goes more through 2D things, then you can check that out above. Right, let's get started. So the diagram here shows a wedge. What a great word, a wedge. So we have this over here with all the vertices labeled, the corners labeled. And the first thing we need to do is work out the length of AC. Now, the best way of doing 3D trigonometry questions is turn it into a 2D problem. So we're looking for this red length here. Notice if we take the base of this particular wedge, we can actually bring out a rectangle and then draw it out in 2D. Notice I label the vertices so I know exactly what I'm dealing with. As soon as we see it in this way, then we can just use Pythagoras to work out the distance of AC. So I like to do this in one smooth calculation. So AC here is equal to the square root of 60 squared plus 80 squared. And if we put that into our calculator, again, I'll let you do that at home. It's one of these lovely exact values. This gives us exactly 100 centimeters. So we can use 3D Pythagoras by breaking things down into 2D. So now we've got 100 centimeters for our AC. It makes working out AP that much easier. And also we can actually work out the angle CAP which is going to be kind of related to that in a moment. Now, before we can actually work out uh, AP here, we can also work out what CP is. So if I take this triangle over here, I can actually bring it out in 2D. This is a key skill that we need to learn. And so once we've got it in 2D, it makes it much more easy to use our normal trigonometry. So notice we do this in the normal way. Our 80 centimeters is our adjacent. We're looking for the opposite. So which of Sokatoa has O or A in it? Well, it's going to be our last one. It's going to be the tan here. So the tan of 25 is going to equal the opposite, which we just call O, divided by the adjacent, which is 80 here. We do a little bit of rearrangement here. So the opposite of divided by 80 is timesing by 80. So we times by 80 on both sides. This gives us 80 tan 25 is equal to the opposite side. Again, we can just pop this in our calculator. I seem to say that word pop quite a lot. And that gives us then the opposite length equal to 37.304 dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> now we know that side. We can then focus on the AP. Notice we actually have a right angle triangle that goes across the shape. Notice this angle here is a right angle. So again, we bring it out into 2D, just like you see here. We now know AC is equal to 100 centimeters. We also know that this length here, the CP, notice the labeling is really important here. That's going to be the 37.304. And again, to work out AP, we can just use Pythagoras in our smooth calculation. So the square root of 100 squared plus 37.304 dot, 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 all squared. Okay, if we pop that into the calculator, so it's an important skill here, but being able to put these things into your calculator. So it's square root of 100 squared plus what we just worked out squared. So again, we'll just delete those things there. And that gives us then AP to be 106.73 centimeters to two decimal place. In fact, we've got a bit of overkill here to actually work out the angle CAP. Notice the angle CAP, this is C, this is A, this is P. So it's the angle at A which is surrounded by C and P. So it's going to be this angle here. And now we have a great choice. We can either use sine, cosine, or tangent to work out the angle. I think I'm going to use cosine. So I'm going to use the value we just made and this value here. This is our adjacent. This is our hypotenuse. So the cosine of the angle is equal to a over H, remember the Sokatoa, that's really important. So 100 divided by the 106.73. And so the angle here, <coughs> remember the opposite of cosining is inverse cosining on both sides. 
this cancels. So we do the inverse cosine of that lovely looking fraction. And again, if we pop it into our calculator, again, you can check this at home. So we do inverse cosine and then 100 divided by this new side that we've just worked out. And that gives you then the final answer for the angle of 20.46 degrees. So this is a quick warm up to 3D trigonometry. What I really want to get across in this particular slide is take your 3D shape and then bring out the 2D shapes so you can work out what you're looking for. Okay, and on to the exam questions. So this is really important. Make sure we build up our exam experience. So notice we haven't looked at pyramids so far, but we can still use the same ideas. So the prior pyramid <coughs> has a base A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, D at the bottom, and it's got a side of five centimeters, so it's a square here. The vertex E is vertically above, which is important, and the height is nine centimeters. And we want to find the angle that EC makes with the base A, B, C, D. So if I draw in our diagonal line, across here, what we're looking for is the angle that's made if we look at the triangle, and let's do this in blue, this triangle here, so we've got this nine centimeters, and then we've got this triangle, and we're working out this angle that's made with the plane here, with the base A, B, C, D. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is think of the base as a 2D shape. So we have essentially a square, so five centimeters, five centimeters, and we need to find a diagonal going across, but notice we're looking for the blue part here. So we actually only need half of it. So we're only looking, let's put the blue in here, we're only looking for a half of it. So we use our smooth Pythagoras operation here. So to work out AC, we just need to do the square root of five squared plus five squared. But because we're looking for the blue part, I'll put blue here is equal to a half of the square root of five squared plus five squared. Now, most students just rush to your calculator. They want a decimal that they can work with. But one of the really key skills to be an A or A star student is just to keep it like this. Just leave it in this particular form. So this bottom side here is just equal to a half of the square root of five squared plus five squared. Now we know that if I draw out this particular triangle, like so, we know the bottom is a half the square root of five squared plus five squared. We know the height is equal to nine centimeters. And crucially, we're looking for this angle here. So essentially, we've just now got a soccer toa procedure. Let's look at the sides that we have here. So this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. So we have our soccer toa which has O and A in it. Again, we've got our tangent here that we're going to use. So to find the angle here, let's just call that X. The tan of the angle is equal to opposite, which is nine all over this adjacent, this horrible half square root of five squared plus five squared. Again, still haven't touched a single calculator at this point. However, we want to find the angle here. So what's the opposite of tanning? That's gonna be inverse tan on both sides. This cancels, this gives us x is equal to tan inverse of nine over one half square root of five squared plus five squared. Only at this point would I reach for my calculator to get my most exact answer possible. <clears throat> so make sure you've got your calculator here and it's in deg, so it says degrees at the top. So first of all, we need our inverse tan, then we're going to have a fraction here. So at the top, we have nine. At the bottom, we have 0 0.5 or a half. And then we have our square root. Again, just be very comfortable with putting these things in what maybe looks like slightly ugly. So we have our denominator here, close bracket, and press the magic button. And then we end up with our answer of 68.55, the most accurate answer possible which we can then round to 68.6 degrees to one decimal place. You'll see here in the mark scheme is a four mark question. That again, as long as you've got sensible rounding, that's perfectly fine. I've done it to one decimal place, but if you did it 
to two decimal places, that is also okay as well. Right, this time we have a wedge just like last time. Do love that word. So we have a what they call a triangular prism. I guess that's the proper word for it. And we have angle BBP, BPC, the one over here, equaling 90 degrees. And our first task is to work out AC. So the side going all the way across. So we've got four centimeters here already, but we need to work out this diagonal that goes all the way across. We can use the base to help us here. So we're gonna draw out a right angle triangle. This is 12 centimeters, this is five centimeters, and we want to work out this side. Again, we can use a smooth Pythagoras procedure. So the length of AP, it's good to label these things, is the square root of five squared plus 12 squared. Again, your calculator can do this for you, but I know this one in my mind, this is equal to 13 centimeters, a nice exact value. So we can pop in 13 centimeters here. Once we've got that, but we now look at this triangle going across our wedge. So if we draw this out, we then have 13 centimeters at the base, four going upwards. And then the length that we're looking for, this one is our mystery length here. Again, we can use Pythagoras. So our length of AC is equal to the square root of four squared plus 13 squared. This is not an exact value, but again, we have our calculator. So we go to our calculator and go shift four squared plus 13 squared. Press the big button. It likes putting it in third form, particularly on many Casio calculators. So just press the SD button here. That will give you a nice decimal. So that's 13.601. Let's write that in. 13.601. So again, to one decimal place, that's just 13.6 centimeters. Sometimes it's useful to actually have this as a square root. So we can always press the SD button. So the square root of 185. Sometimes it's useful to have an exact value for a follow-up question. And guess what? There's a follow-up question. So we want to find out the angle between AC and the base ABPQ. So if we go back to our diagram, we're essentially looking for this angle here. So we can actually transfer this across to our triangle earlier. So we're looking for this particular angle that's going across our base. So what we can do here is we can go, okay, we're looking for this angle. We've got opposite and adjacent. So we're looking for tan here. So we can do tan of the angle. So we we'll just call it X is equal to four over 13. Again, what's the opposite of tanning? You know it already, it's gonna be inverse tan. So we pop this in, into our calculator. I'll do it here this time. So tan inverse, four divided by 13. That's going to equal 17.102 dot 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 and that gives us 17.1 degrees for a question like this and this is a good exam tip to be aware of notice i'm not using this side here if possible just in case i've made a mistake if i made a mistake then using this side would then double up that mistake as well again Reducing down the accuracy at the end, you'll get obviously see some follow through marks as well. So using the size of whole numbers, you've got less likely a chance of making a big mistake. So you can see the two answers here, 13.6 and 17.1. If you're liking the content, then please do think about liking and subscribing as there's always tons of IGCSE content coming out, particularly as the exams approach. Right on to question 23, very similar to a question we've already seen, but we've got a slight difference here, which we'll talk about. So we have a pyramid, we're rectangular base this time. Uh, this vertically above, so this is our height going upwards. And notice this time we don't know the height, but we do know the diagonal side coming downwards. And we want to find the angle that VC makes with the base. So if I draw in our triangle that we're looking at, so this triangle here, and then we want this angle here. Now, before we can do that, we need to take the base of our 3D shape. This is 12 centimeters, this is 10 centimeters. And again, we want that diagonal across, but we only need 
half of the diagonal, just like the previous question. Notice these themes come up again and again. So to work out the blue side here, so let's just call this blue, whilst writing in red, we want to do our smooth calculation. So square root of 10 squared plus 12 squared, but we only want a half of it. So we just put a half in front. That gives us then the blue length here. So this length is equal to a half square root of 10 squared plus 12 squared. And now we can use this triangle VMC. So let's pop the triangle down here. So we have the bottom side, that's a half square root of 10 squared plus 12 squared. This is 14 centimeters. We we're looking for this angle. So notice slightly different to last time because we had the height. This time we have the diagonal. So we've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So what we're going to use from so ka toa, what has a and h in it, it's going to be our cosine this time. So to work out this angle, we do the cosine of x is equal to a, which is that half square root of 10 squared plus 12 squared all over 14. And again, we're looking for an angle here. So the opposite of cosining is inverse cosining. So we're going to inverse cosine that horrible looking fraction that we see here. Perfect. Okay, so we pop this into our calculator. Again, worth going through these steps just to see what buttons I'm pressing here. So we have shift cosine, open bracket, we want a fraction here. Now we've got this ugly half square root of 10 squared. So 0 0.5 shift 10 squared plus 12 squared, again, all over 14, making sure we close the bracket. And we get our final answer here of 56.09. Let's write that down, 56.09. So if we round this, it's going to be 56.1 degrees to one decimal place. So we can pop that in for our four marks. Again, these kind of questions are four marks, so you do get quite a lot of uh, method marks within that if something slightly goes wrong. Okay, so you can see the mark scheme here. This has been a, a whiz tour through all things 3D trigonometry, making sure you really know about the key aspects of it. If you need to revise your trigonometry in general, I did mention this at the start of the video, then check out the video right in front of you where I go through all things trigonometry, sine rule, cosine rule, bearings. Actually, I did a separate bearings video, so let's pop that down here as well.